Welcome to Building the Future, hosted by Kevin Horick. With millions of listeners a month, Building the Future has quickly become one of the fastest rising programs with a focus on interviewing startups, entrepreneurs, investors, CEOs, and more. The radio and TV show airs in 15 markets across the globe, including Silicon Valley. For full show times, past episodes, or to sponsor the show, please visit buildingthefutureshow.com. Welcome back to the show. Today we have Frederick Lucas Conwell. He's the co-founder and CEO of Growth Resources. Frederick, welcome to the show. Well, uh, hi, Kevin. Nice speaking with you. Yeah, you as well. I'm excited to have you on the show. I, I think what we're going to get into into a bit is, is selfishly, I'm really fascinated about. But maybe before we get into all that, let's get to know you a little bit better and start off with where you grew up. Okay, so I grew up in the... Like my accent was, was, will tell you, I, am, I grew up in France. Very cool. Uh, spent some time abroad. I, you know, I worked in, in Japan. Um, oh, cool. Did some uh, engineering and uh, you know, pivoted to organizational behavior after an experience of uh, creating a company. And uh, you know, that was a company which was VC-backed okay. and uh, grew fast. And we acquired another company. And so I... I had the early on experience at managing people, recruiting people, uh, okay. hiring people. And uh, I found myself that, uh, you know, beyond uh, being good in uh, finance and, you know, product and marketing, uh, the most uh, challenging part was managing people. And so sure. uh, I decided to devote my, my entire rest of career, so to speak, uh, uh, into that uh, subject matter. And so I sold my company and uh, uh, did a PhD in organizational behavior that was in uh, in France. Okay. Uh, and uh, started um, a consulting company, leadership development, uh, which was uh, based on the more uh, accurate, uh, positive, and uh, you know ob objective information on people. Um, I wanted to do things a bit differently. And so uh, it was based on not just observation, but how leaders could be better at leading and organizing and managing, um, uh, uh, taking advantage of a personality assessment, uh, as we started to do in the 1990s. Okay? Uh, I moved to the U.S. in Silicon Valley. Uh, that was in 2005 with my family. Okay. I have four daughters, and uh, I've been married for 32 years now. Wow. Congrats. And you. so... Yep, thank you. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's interesting because you know, marriage management. There are a lot of common things between you know these two two things here. Sure. Anyway, we can go back to that. Okay. Um, and so I enjoyed Silicon Valley. For an entrepreneur, it's this perfect place to be. And this is where we started the GI as um, a new way, a new approach of looking at management and uh, changing, so to speak, the landscape of management by bringing some more objective information. To managers about who they are and uh, and others they they bring into their organization. So that's uh, you know very quickly how I got to what I'm doing today um, with my French accent. Oh, no, I think that's great. Um, so I, I'm curious, how are you guys different than traditional methods? Because you, you mentioned you you're looking at it in a different angle. How are you guys different, and how do you work with individuals and companies to to change behavior? So how we do things differently by uh, bringing, as I said before, some objective information. So let, let, let's dig a little bit here. Sure. Because we've seen you know, tons of stuff uh, yeah. in, in management, like the Meyer Briggs and, and the DISC and Enneagram and whatnot. It seems that every day there is a new personality assessment. Right? Sure. Uh, and so, so my research has been uh, to dig into all these techniques. Okay. And uh, what works, what doesn't work. I mean, um, it, it looks like you know, uh, the this field is like you know what uh, has been automotive uh, automobile field uh, 100 years ago. That things are evolving at not such high speed uh, okay. as with what we see in technology, but but still things are evolving. And so uh, we are far you know beyond. Uh, the early years of the Meyer Briggs. So we know the limitations of these techniques. And we have seen some techniques which were popular in the 1980s, 90s, which completely disappeared. And so now we have a better understanding of what works, what doesn't work, what we can get out of these techniques. 
Okay. And so when they are work heated, when they are, you know, properly built, uh, there is a huge benefit from working with this kind of assessments for understanding faster, better, uh, not just employees, but also candidates. And so, you know, how we are different by, by bringing this science to, to management, by making clear, you know, what works, what doesn't work, and how what we can assess can fit within a bigger picture of understanding people and understanding their personality. Yeah, so, interesting. Keep going, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, so uh, that's how we are doing things differently. And this is how um, we uh, worked on that book uh, to acknowledge, uh, you know, uh, what's happening now in management. And uh, we cannot base our understanding on people just on intuition and observation. And we need some tooling like has happened in all kind of sciences, uh, in technology, for instance. Okay. okay sure. uh, so management will not be able to do without some kind of tooling in the future. And uh, so that's what you know, the book uh, we published is about. This is opening the eyes of managers about, you know, look, there's a revolution happening right now. And uh, all this tooling was for recruiters at some point. It was for you know, consultants at another point. And by the way, now it's for you. You know, you cannot just um, uh, build your organization and build your understanding on people um, from your guts and from your intuition and from what others tell you. You have to build that understanding yourself and get some tools for that. Uh, you will not be able, or other managers in the future are not going to be able to do it you know, just by themselves like you are doing today. Interesting. So how do you work with companies to actually do that? Because I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of people that end up being managers probably didn't start their career off in management, go to school for management. And it seems like a lot of people end up getting promoted into management. And for better or worse, they don't really know what they're doing because that's not what they they were originally set out to do in their career. What are your thoughts around that? Oh my God, this is a great question. Thank you, uh, Kevin, for this question. This is, you know, <laughs> at the center of everything we observe today. I mean, we have said that for decades. You know, people sure. leave not their companies, but their manager. And so there is no real proper school for managing people. I'm, I'm speaking here you know, specifically about managing people. I'm right. not speaking about managing marketing, managing finance, managing you know, any other things. Right. But managing people, that's something you cannot learn on the bench you know, at school. Uh, that's sure. something you have to learn as an adult uh, by managing, by experiencing. Interesting. Um, I, have, I have four daughters and four of them are now you know, at an age where they are uh, starting to manage people, and okay. uh, my God, you know, it remembers, uh, you know, how hard it was, you know, when I started myself, and uh, it is the same story for most managers. You know, how to start managing? Uh, this is tough. You know, you are going to learn a lot, a lot about people, what they do, what they don't do, what gets uh, people, you know, uh, be engaged at work. Uh, as managers, there is a lot we have to do, we need to do to understand people beyond our guts. Sure. Okay? So this is, this, is a, you know, this is a great question. This is, eventually there is no easy answer for, for this question. But, uh, you know, uh, our call here and what we do is you had better speed up the process. You, know, you cannot wait 10 years or 20 years to be a good manager. Right. You know, that's one of the big change in, in, in these days. Okay? And so you have to, to start experiencing management as soon as possible. Okay. And you need to get some tools for understanding how people you know, are so different from who you are and what they need and what get them engaged. Uh, and again, without tooling, it's going to be super hard. It's going to, to take too much time. And so to fasten this process, you need to get up to speed on 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 you know on this tooling as soon as possible. Sure. So what you mentioned this tooling, what exactly do you guys give and help people with and and actually what types of tools do you give people to help them become a better manager whether they're at the beginning of their career or somewhere in the middle or or maybe even close to the end. <laughs> so first thing is uh they have to go through the experience. And, okay. so, and so what we have devised, in fact, is um, 
you know, is a survey, which is a two question survey. So, okay. and, uh, you know, I encourage everyone to try that, you know, it's just two questions, it takes less than 10 minutes. And we don't need more, basically. We don't need a one hour questionnaire to understand how people operate. And so what science has you know, uncovered is uh, instead of measuring traits, uh, there are some core big dimensions of personality that we need to be aware of. And so we have four big dimensions. I'm not going to, you know, to, to speak specifically about these dimensions here. Uh, that's something we cover you know, in the book. Okay. But we are speaking about these big dimensions and, um, you know, as, as the center, the core of how we, we behave, how we get engaged, how we make decisions, how, how, how we do you know, everything we are doing. Eh? Right. And so through that, that process, through that tooling, uh, we bring this information to every single manager, every single leader. You, know, you need to understand what type of leader you are. You cannot be everything. Okay. Right. Uh, but you are going to grow and be successful your own way, your own specific way, your own unique way. Okay. So, and that's the first information we want to provide to every manager and to every leader. Okay. Okay. Uh, what's your leadership style? How, what's your management style? And be, let's be clear, it's not going to change that much what we bring here with this process. Okay. So the tool is a result of you know, so much work which sure. has been done in the personality and survey field. But we are pretty proud of you know, what we have done here in a very simple way to bring this information. Then you know, the process is what you know about yourself. You know, everyone needs to know about it. Okay. Uh, why candidates have to wait for six months to go into a team building to understand how, who they are. Okay? Sure. And in a more precise, accurate way than what the Mario Brings kind of techniques have been doing so far. Okay? And so bring this information to candidates. Bring this information to the employees and take advantage of this information yourself too as a manager to better understand what those candidates and what those employees need in order to be successful performing in your own team, in your environment. Okay? So that's basically the process. And we transfer that knowledge, um, not just the tooling, but the whole knowledge and the whole experience we have built um, around that tooling to the managers, to the executives, so that can, they can be as autonomous as possible in taking advantage of this information. So that's how we, we do it, in fact. So we are not consulting, you know, except when we have to, but uh, basically we, we license and we train uh, executives and managers and HR with them, uh, and sometimes also consultants to, to be as autonomous as possible with the tooling and everything that comes along with the tooling. Yeah, interesting. Uh, so for people, and I would put myself in, in this boat where mm -hmm. I was basically trained and still am on the design side, and mm -hmm. as my career has progressed, obviously I've had to manage uh, more junior junior designers and whatnot, and I found it to be well, I, a, a real struggle for me sometimes because I'm – I didn't feel I was very good or maybe it's just self-conscious. Maybe it's a bit of both, but it's really hard when you get promoted into something that you were potentially not really ever thought you would ever do. Maybe you don't even want to do right. But you also mm -hmm. realize that if you want to get move up the, the chain in, in a company, you basically need to be a manager of some kind. Do you find that, or, or what's your thoughts around that? Oh, totally. I mean, uh, you know, how to progress in an organization. There are different ways to progress, but one one way is to, you know, take, uh, you know, more, and uh, and by doing more, you need more people to do more, and uh, and then you are in charge of a team. And uh, as we said before, you are not, you know specifically trained for that, you know, how to make a team work. And so, um, and so then you are paid to be good at it. Right. And, uh, and uh, you know, basically, you know, and most of the time, and, and, and a manager cannot admit that, of course, you know, you are paid to be good at something, so you had better show you are good at it. Otherwise, you're not going to be compensated for what you are supposed to do. Okay? And so, and so it, it's hard to admit, look, you know, I have, like you just you express yourself, you know, it's like, you know, oh my God, it's hard or I'm not sure what I'm going to experience now. Sure. Uh, this is what we observe uh, most of the time. I would say, you know, uh, all the time, almost, you know, uh, um, you know, a manager will can express it the way you, you just express it. You know, it's, it's tough. It's changing. 
and, and, and then I have to learn about it. And I don't know exactly how to learn about that. And, and yes, there is coaching. And yes, there is, you know, some, some stuff, you know, and I can read about it. Uh, and there's a lot you can read about it. Uh, but practically, how to do it, uh, you're left alone most of the time. Sure. So how do you work with companies or individuals to actually, sure, that once a manager gets promoted in their organization, they start mm -hmm. actually being a manager, how do you work with them to make them a better manager? Because there's got to be ways to figure out what they're good at as a man or what they're good at and what they need work on as a manager. So this is an incremental process. Okay. okay? Uh, you cannot train or, you know, someone who is not yet sensitive to how hard it's going to be. Okay? So they have to touch a little bit about, about it, you know, how hard okay. it is. And so they have to experience, they have to try, they have to start somewhere, somehow. And then you provide progressively. And it, it happens most of the time through, you know, HR or through, a, you know, a consultant, through a coach, uh, uh, you know, to assist here in the process to make it, you know, um, uh, not as painful. Okay. Um, and uh, and to pro progressively also you know, provide that knowledge and assistance for, you know, that new manager to, to become as, uh, as a good manager as possible, yeah, as fast as possible. And so at some point, um, so f first, you know, in the process, as I said before, it's, you know, understand who you are, what, what's your style, and, and, and be positive about it. Uh, don't expect to be everything that you can read in book one and book two and book three because they are all contracting, you know, themselves. Okay? So you have to, to pick what, what is going to make you good at doing what you are doing okay? and, and just, you know, understand that, that first part of what management is about. You need to be good at something. Okay? Sure. And uh, build your leadership uh, on something, not on everything. And so that's always the first step that's brought by, you know, an outside consultant or, you know, an HR. And then, you know, progressively, as I said before, it's, it's in incremental. So uh, you have a team and so, and you have your recruitment to, to be doing. So how can we assist for that? Okay? And sure. until uh, there is an opportunity for the manager himself or herself to take, okay, I'm going to invest. No, it's not. You know, huge amount of time, at least one day, two days, to learn more about how I can master uh, that science and be a bit more autonomous, uh, because I cannot be constantly assisted by by someone to do my job that I need to do every minute in very single minute of you know communicating with people, engaging them, adapting my style, adapting you know what I need to say and not say. Yeah, that's not something that can be assisted constantly. Uh, so it's a progressive uh, journey, so to speak. Uh, that we need to make uh, as fast as possible so to have managers who are as good as possible, you know, for, for doing their job. Interesting. So you mentioned a book a couple of times already. What made you write a book and what's the book called and about? So we wanted to share our findings and observations and we are so enthusiastic and uh, so much loving what we're doing. I mean, by we... It's myself and our associates uh, okay. who are uh, in the U.S. and they are also abroad in Brazil, in Canada, in, uh, you know, in France and Romania. And so we are, you know, we are growing this organization. So we wanted to share this experience, you know, and what's going on, and also what our clients were experiencing. So this is about sharing, you know, what's happening uh, okay. in this world, you know, of what we have built and the benefits of it. And so it's not just ourselves uh, speaking to ourselves, but also, sure. you, know, uh, you know, and the book is, is a proper media for that. Uh, so uh, the book's title is, um, is uh, this, uh, sorry about that, I, I, Lead Beyond Intuition. I wrote two books, in fact. And okay. so Lead Beyond Intuition is, is the first book. Uh, I wrote another one, uh, which just came after this one, which is uh, uh, Discover the Best in You. Okay. Uh, but Lead Beyond Intuition is our first book uh, for leaders, for managers, for you know, explaining what we're just you know, we're speaking about uh, about management, and uh, you know, and management can be you know, warmer and uh, nice and, and good, and you don't have to suffer with that. Interesting. So, what made you actually decide to write a book to complement what you guys are doing? On, on the company side or what was the rationale behind writing a book? 
or two books, there I should a, say. Yeah, there was a demand for that. Okay. Um, there was a demand because you learn about management by not just you know, listening uh, and experiencing, but also about reading. And some, some managers are more about reading. Okay. And so we needed to also uh, take what we were experiencing in this format. Uh, and so the book was a necessity, especially in larger organizations where you know you convince a few people and they are super enthusiastic and then uh, they need some some means also to uh, to go to some others uh, and say, look, you know this is what we have discovered and uh, you know and this is not just me and you know there are you know a lot of people who are enthusiastic about it. this is what they share. And so the book is is the best uh, uh, you know way to to convey uh, all this uh, information and uh, and uh, experience. Uh, so not just for us, but also for our clients, so that uh, you know they can spread the message out, so to speak. No, that that makes a lot of sense. So how does what we're talking about and and you guys do move into the recruitment and HR space? Yes, absolutely, we do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, but how, like, how do you work with uh, companies in in recruitment and HR? Do you actually work in those departments? Do you work with recruiting and HR companies, or how does that work? So we work with both uh, end clients, we call okay. them, or recruiting companies, or you know, executive search companies. Okay. Uh, so we work with uh, you know recruitment by not just looking at candidates, but looking at what uh, it's required for the organization. And typically, uh, when we uh, get involved into not just you know, the competencies expected in a job, but the behavior, uh, the, the emotional aspects of how people you know, behave in an organization, you know, this personality component, uh, how people you know, perform in that job, uh, there is generally no consensus within the organization. So one, you know, one way to start with a recruitment, we have different techniques for that. We assess a job. What's okay. required for the job, and we ask different managers, executives to uh, to feel. It's another survey than the people survey. It's a, it's a survey for the job, and it's twenty four proposition. It doesn't take that long, but at the end we get different input about you know what's expected in the job, not from a um, you know uh, a knowledge perspective, uh, or you know how many years of experience, or you know what school people have been, or where they live, or you know, but on, on this again, behavioral slash emotional component, you know, we need to agree about that. And so there is typically no agreement. And the first step uh, is to to get this agreement. Uh, if we are, let's say, on a market where you know there is uh, you know competitors which are aggressive, um, it's better eventually to have a salesperson who is also aggressive. Okay? Uh, and so and so this is. You know, being more accurate, more nuanced about what we mean by being aggressive. If aggressive is, you know, the right, you know, terminology for that. Okay? So, uh, because some people, some executives will, will have a different approach, you know, and with different marketing, we may have a different approach. But how all of that is synthesized into the job that needs to be filled by a candidate, uh, that's the first step in the process for recruitment. Uh, since what we are assessing uh, with this GI technology, this GI tooling is work related. Uh, it's safe also to be used for for recruitment. Okay? We don't discriminate men from from women or people over forty and below forty. So we are, we have done the statistics to make sure that you know we comply with all regulation. And so legally, it's it, it's fine. It's good. Okay? Uh, unlike many other systems where you know you cannot prove that and it, or they were not built for for work. Okay? So what we have done here is, is build forward. So the first 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 step is working on the job, and then looking at if candidates you know match or don't match. Uh, and if they don't match, that's fine. But at least we know they don't match, and we have to do something um, to make sure that either we adapt the job to the candidate or we adapt the candidate to the job. But at least we know there is a distance here that we need to cover. Okay? Uh, so we train recruiters. We train you know, consulting organizations uh, to be able to master all these tools and master the process uh, so we have something that's, uh, you know, better than what we have seen so far. Sure. We take advantage of all these assessments or so, and we have, you know, clients who are doing some beautiful job with it by making sure that candidates take the opportunity of the process to better understand who they are and, uh, and also to better pitch the job 
for candidates. Uh, that's something we go through in Silicon Valley here. It's not just about recruiting. It's about re recruiting faster and better than competitors. And so how we can build a, a trusted relationship with a candidate faster, that's, that's one of the change. Uh, how we can attract that candidate who has you know, different options, you know, may go to Google and, uh, and uh, Facebook and you know, uh, Silicon Valley has, has so many opportunities for, you know, for candidates. And so the challenge is how to attract that specific candidate in our company. Even if we're a small company, we should be able to attract those candidates. Okay? And sure. so uh, we make use of this refined information to better attract these candidates and, uh, and, and feedback to the candidate. And then when the candidate is onboarded, it's, uh, you know, make sure that the manager better understand the candidate as fast as possible, not just during the interviewing phase, but also on the onboarding phase. Um, and that the candidate understand the manager. Uh, and so sharing this information and sharing also this information within the team. Okay? So it's positive information. It's good information for everyone, but it needs also to be shared. And by doing all of that, uh, the recruitment process is just you know, improved by, you know, uh, magnitude, you know, uh, this is this is just amazing. How uh, much has to be done to go, you know, uh, away from this ten interview process by ten different people of a candidate, who at the end don't want to enter into the company because it has been so, you know, uh, uh, taking so much energy from everyone and including the candidate. And so uh, uh, the change here in recruitment and making, you know, use of this tooling in a different process is how to be faster, better um, at uh, not just selecting, but also at attracting and retaining uh, the right person in the right, you know, in, in the job. No, that makes sense. So I'm curious, how do you work with managers to actually manage the different personality types, uh, generations, and, and any of those other things that, that make people uniquely different? So yes, and your question may encompass also, you know, uh, you know, gender differences and, sure. uh, you know, and uh, also cultural differences. Um, so the 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 fast uh, <laughs> um, the quick answer here is uh, we make sure that we don't, you know, the, the information we provide here is not gender biased or not culturally biased or not age biased. Okay? So. Uh, the profile. We have a, a visual representation of how people function. Okay. okay. Uh, and we did that because words are words, and words have different meaning for different people. And so, at the end, the visual representation of how people function is, uh, is is not biased by all these you know, different different aspects, other aspects. So, how we deal with uh, people you know, of different cultures and different genders and uh, uh, different ages is by saying, look, you know, you have your own style, you have your own way of performing, regardless of your gender and age and cultural uh, origin. And you have to pay respect to that. And uh, it's positive. Enjoy, you know, the way you operate um, and be positive about uh, others who are different from who you are. And we put a visual on that to make sure they get it. Okay? And, uh, and so you can see the nuances, you can see the difference. Uh, again, beyond all these differences in terms of age, gender, and culture. Okay? So this is going through through these differences uh, by paying attention. That's something that's common to everyone, um, uh, but that, that's critical for you know, understanding how they operate. Okay? So that's our answer to, to, to this question. You, know, you, you don't have to... Um, uh, uh, look at the age of the person, the culture of the person, the gender of the person, but look at what makes them who they are in terms of the behavioral and emotional you know, component of, of, of who they are. Interesting. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I think in in kind of every generation, there's been highly motivated people. There's been people that are compl not motivated at all and everywhere in between. And and a pigeonholing certain generations or types of people into these weird silos never seemed to really make sense to me. And it sounds like, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, you found that as well, right? That you, it's more on the person, like what type of person they are, and 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 their background and experience, and and how they need to be managed. Is that correct? 
That's correct. Uh, that's a good way to put it. Absolutely. Uh, the only difference we see is there is more and more demand with younger generations to be better at it faster. Okay? They are not okay. as patient as, as in the past. And so they really, you know, more than before, uh, you know, I would say, let's say 20 years ago, 30 years ago, uh, more now than before, they are, uh, you know, they, they want that to, to happen. They want to be understood. You know, they want to understand themselves, and there are tons of stuff and resources on the internet for that. Uh, but they want to get to the truth of who they are and how they can perform and how they can build also their manager skills when they are managers, when they start to be managers, uh, better than what their parents had done. Okay? So there is, uh, there is some kind of impatience about that or some kind of, of need to, okay, now you know, we, we, we need to be good at it. You sure. know, we, we have been speaking about purposeful environment, mindful, you know, mindfulness. We are hearing now about flourish, flourishing, and so they are, you know, they have heard all of that, and so they they want an environment with a purpose. Uh, they are more, you know, mindful about who they are, and they want to flourish. They want to, you know, to be, you know, growing into an organization unlike. You know, their parents have been doing in, in different ways. So they are open more for new ways to look at all these issues, uh, more, more, much more than before. Sure. And and in the book, you, you talk about, well, you give some really good examples of uh, like real life scenarios, which I thought was really quite interesting. But but I'm curious to know, what, you, you just mentioned something that I, I want to dive into deeper is, Obviously, different people are motivated by different things. Sometimes it's money. Sometimes it's titles. Sometimes it's both of those things. Sometimes it's freedom. Sometimes it's how how they're taking care of the environment, and the list goes on and on. How do you work with or, or train people to understand and, and figure out what motivates the people they manage? Because I think that's got to be really tricky, right? And then you have to sell that sometimes to the higher ups to make sure that some of those things get implemented. Absolutely. And motivation is a big subject. Uh, it has been for, you know, for decades. Sure. Uh, and, you know, it started eventually with Maslow. And so we speak a little bit about that in the book. Uh, it's to a point today, you know, all these discussions about motivation where we are pretty clear that there is intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Okay. And so you can be intrinsically motivated uh, and uh, there are stuff happening out there in your environment that's extrinsic that may be in flow or not in flow with you know, what in intrinsically motivates you. So what we do here, we, uh, with the GI, we focus on that component of, uh, of motivation, uh, which is uh, behaviorally and emotionally you know, related. And so we focus on that component here and uh, the how of how we perform, uh, how we decide, how we get engaged, how we need to be understood. Okay? And so uh, rather than the what or the okay. how. Okay? And so this is a how of how we operate, uh, which is at the core of who we are. And uh, what your survey reveals, if you apply some appropriate statistics, is uh, that's uh, something that's not going to change that much. Okay? Sure. And so whatever is happening in your environment, which is extrinsic, they want to you know, make you behave in different ways. Uh, but uh, if it's too distant from your natural and intrinsic way of, of, of doing things, we find some emotional labor uh, okay. and some resistance. And uh, our advice is don't go there. Okay, so we provide the information about this is where it's warmer and nicer. Okay, this is how you operate uh, most naturally, and you can go uh, somewhere else, uh, but you will have to recover from the effort that's taking you away from your natural you know, flow, from your natural way of performing. Okay? Uh, so that's how we you know, bring this information about motivation into into the organization. Okay. That's what, uh, this is how you operate, but this is also what motivates you and, uh, and your unique way of being motivated. And if extrinsically you need to adapt, that's fine, but at least be knowledgeable about it. Sure. So how do you work with executives at a company 
and give us maybe some of the the challenges sometimes that they face that the average person or their employees might not think about? So working with leaders, um, it's an incremental uh, process again. Okay. Why do you say that, just out of curiosity? Because this is a sensitive subject. Sure. Uh, and uh, we start with um, so executive teams, and uh, for instance, a CEO or you know a VP of sales, and they are they look at what we are doing and they get so enthusiastic, and and so we have a discussion, a conversation like we are having right now. Sure. And uh, and say, oh my God, I need that for you know the world executive team. And and so it's incremental because we we know that you know it takes you know one person to change the world, but it takes one person not you know to to make things not happen. And so sure. typically, the executive team, you know, you have people who are resisting to change. Sure. Uh, and uh, we want to have this incremental approach to make sure that you know one by one, you know, they understand what's the benefit for them. Sure. And uh, they have their opinion about leadership. You have tons of books on the subject. They all read about it. They have their own philosophy. They have their own consultants working with them. All, you know, they are eventually coached and, uh, and different techniques. And they have all seen the Mary Briggs and whatnot. Okay? So this is a sensitive subject because uh, sure. uh, uh, you know, there are so many things, again, which have been said about it and because it's about them. Okay? And so we you, we take it with leaders, with executives, you know, step by step by, you know, let's start with your team and let's have a one-on-one -on -one so we can explain you know, the benefits for them and for the organization. And then when they are ready, uh, we open it for, you know, their teams and uh, we open it for their recruitments and, uh, and when they are at ease with it. Okay? But every single person has to be kind of uh, uh, taken into the process and, you uh, as we can measure with a GI, um, some people are extremely skeptic. Right. And so uh, we have to provide more information to them. We have to train them. We have to you know, make sure that you know, they're okay with you know, this, uh, this new way of looking at management. Interesting. No, that, that, that makes sense. Is there anything that you see executives or leaders do all the time that they should maybe reconsider not doing? Because that's got to be... A, a bit of a challenge sometimes. Huh. Well, this is a general remark about change. Okay. You, know, you need to open, be open you know, about change. Uh, change needs to happen in management uh, because we are aware now of so many issues. And so we are going round and round and round about you know, the same issues with the same things. And so at some point, uh, uh, they have to, you know, take, uh, you know, take action, and uh, uh, it's not going to happen by itself. And okay. So uh, instead of waiting endlessly, um, they have to start, uh, you know, small and, uh, and and progressively, you know, bring the change into the organization. Uh, but we're speaking about, uh, you know, change about people, and so you know, it's unlike technology. Technology happened at high pace. Uh, in, in management, in people space, uh, in humanity, uh, in your field, um, uh, it, it, it's just slower. Eh? And, and so, but they have to start somewhere, somehow. And uh, if they are more courageous, uh, you know, they can speed up the process. Uh, but they have to start somewhere. No, that, that totally makes sense. So we're kind of coming to the end of the show. So how about we close with mentioning where people can get more information about yourself, the company, and the, the books you've written? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a website. It's uh, gri.co. Um, and, uh, and so the book is called uh, Lead Beyond Intuition. So either with a website or going to Amazon for, for the book, uh, you, know, you, will, you will find you know, the two things here. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, pretty much, uh, this is how to, you know, to get in contact with the GI and what we're doing. Perfect. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time and your day to be on the show and I look forward to keeping in touch with you and have a good rest of your day, man. Well, thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you for your, your time. Okay. Bye. Bye. 
Thanks for listening. Please visit our website at buildingthefutureshow.com to join the free community, sign up for our newsletter, or to sponsor the show. The music is done by Electric Mantra. You can check him out at electricmantra.com. And keep building the future.